The form release agent is one of the least expensive elements in an architectural concrete project. But knowing how to properly apply it can save you money and make all the difference between an okay surface appearance and one that truly sets your architectural project apart. I invite you to take the next few minutes to watch us demonstrate some simple steps in applying Crescent Architectural Release Agents. When you practice these basic principles in your business, you will save money by using less material, reduce your cleanup time, and achieve better results than you ever thought possible. Let's get started. There are two basic types of form release agents in the concrete industry, a barrier release and a reactive release. Both have their function depending on the nature of the project. A barrier release, typically referred to as a form oil, simply creates a slick layer between the form and the poured concrete. The purpose is primarily to achieve a quick and clean break from the form once the concrete sets. Barrier release agents are not designed for use on high profile surfaces and may result in bug holes, dirty forms, and irregular or stained finishes. On the other hand, a reactive form release agent, such as Cresset's Crete Lease and Platinum Lines, creates a molecular chemical reaction at the form surface, which repels the concrete from sticking to it. Picture trying to hold two magnets with the same polarity together. With a reactive release agent, a little bit goes a long way. Use a very thin, even layer to achieve the best results. In fact, using too much of a reactive release agent can actually create bug holes and other unwanted imperfections on your concrete surface. As with any construction project, your job will be much simpler when you use the recommended equipment. We recommend a commercial electric or compressed air sprayer with a steady pressure of 70 PSI. For best results, we do not recommend a hand pump sprayer because the pressure varies throughout the application. This tends to create uneven distribution in the amount of release agent applied. Only use a sprayer tip that applies a fine, fan-shaped spray pattern on the surface of the form. For smaller projects, an aerosol can works as well. Cresset's aerosols will cover approximately 1,000 square feet of surface area. It's important to use the recommended architectural release agent for the type of form you use. Coverage area and surface finish can vary significantly. Concrete forms can be made of steel, aluminum, plastic, various grades of plywood, silicone, polyurethane, expanded or extruded polystyrene, and other materials. Today, polyurethane is one of the most common types of forms in the industry. Crescent Chemical offers special formulations that are ideal for each of these materials. Consult a Crescent website for the recommended release agent for your forms. A few important points to remember regarding concrete forms. Always store your forms in an area protected from the elements. Never allow debris to collect on the form surface. Be cautious when using a water-based form release such as Crete Lease 20 or any other temperature sensitive form release agent when there's a danger of freezing. Also, the effective shelf life for a water-based form release is usually less than petroleum-based releases. Always refer to the technical spec sheet for the product you use and follow those guidelines for best results. A petroleum-based form release agent is not recommended for application on EPS, EPX, or any other foam-based form unless approved by the manufacturer. Foam-type form liners can be damaged by using a petroleum-based form release, and most form liner manufacturers do not recommend them. Crescent offers specific products formulated for different form materials. Talk with your Crescent sales representative for recommendations on the type of forms, form liners, and molds being used for your project. Environmental regulations are becoming stricter all around the world. Make sure the release agent you're using in your forms complies with your local, state, and federal requirements. Fines for non-compliance can be expensive. Okay, let's get started with the application. First, make sure that your forms are properly prepped. They should be clean, dry, and free of any debris. If not, use a quality form cleaner to prepare them. New forms made of materials such as raw wood, steel, or aluminum should be properly seasoned before using for the first time. 
Now that the forms are ready, let's use our compressed air power sprayer with a fine tip to apply a thin, fan-shaped pattern evenly across every bit of the form surface. These basic tips apply no matter what type of form you're using or how large the job. Here you can see Cresset's Crete Lease Architectural Release Agent being applied to a large concrete form in a commercial precast facility. Notice that the form release is pressurized at a constant PSI. The tip sprays the product in a fine mist in a fan-shaped pattern, and the application technique is the same as in our lab demonstration. Make sure that you do not overspray. For architectural release agents, the thinner, the better. You never want to see dripping or pooling of the liquid on the form surface. Using too much release agent can actually result in unsightly bug holes and other defects on the surface of the concrete. If you're working with a very detailed form design like this one, use a clean, fine cloth saturated with release agent and wrung dry by hand to wipe the entire form surface. This helps to distribute the agent and removes any excess material. Remember that a reactive release agent like Crete Lease is formulated to use a carrying agent such as mineral oils or water to lay down a thin barrier on the form surface at the molecular level. Once applied, the active ingredient will continue to protect your forms and remain available for reaction with the concrete for up to two weeks, as long as the forms are kept in a dry area away from the elements. Once your release agent is evenly applied to the entire surface and you've checked to make sure that there are no pools of liquid in the mold, you're ready to pour your concrete. We're using a standard commercial grade concrete mix for this mold to replicate the type of mix used on the job. Now we're spreading the concrete evenly throughout our mold. Make sure you don't overfill or underfill the mold. Use a trowel to even out the top. Now that we have the correct amount of the mixture, we'll use a vibrating tool to evenly distribute the concrete in the mold. We're using a small vibrating table in this example. Then we cover the mold with a plastic film to prevent water evaporating from the concrete and wait for the concrete to cure. It's been 48 hours since we did our pour. Now let's separate the cured concrete from the form and take a look at the finished product. Looks pretty good. You can achieve similar results with every pour every time as long as you follow the basic steps we've demonstrated in this video. Let's recap. Only use the recommended release agent for the form. Use a compressed air or power sprayer with a fine tip. Check your local regulation for VOC compliance. All forms should be clean and dry. Apply a fine mist of release agent across all surfaces. Wipe away any standing liquid on the form surface. The techniques demonstrated in this video on how to apply Cresset form release agents are the same that were used in the construction of many high-profile, award-winning architectural concrete projects, including the AT&T Cowboys Stadium in Texas, Levi's Stadium in San Francisco, the Natchez Trace Parkway Bridge in Tennessee, the new One World Trade Center in New York City, and thousands of other stadiums, office buildings, bridges, shopping centers, and unique concrete structures around the world. Thanks for watching. To learn more about Cresset's architectural form release agents and associated products, visit our website at cresset.com.